rather than seeking awakening for the self. It is more valuable, more precious. to move towards the love affair with life, to ask yourself, am I willing for this love affair once and for all? Am I willing to give myself to this? When we are in love, yeah, when we fall in love, we give ourselves to love. We give ourselves to the object of our love. Although that's not strictly true, it appears that way on the surface. Actually, we are giving ourselves to love. And the thing is, when we are in love, we love all of life, at least for some time. The love affair with life is a love affair with your experience. Always, always. It's a deep intimacy with your experience, always, just as it is, without interpretation and without interference. Interpretation and interference creates the matrix of the self, the scaffolding of the self the prison of the self. Without a self, there is only intimacy with what is. Without a self, there is only God. God not as another object. God not as a belief system. God not as a higher power, but simply what is the totality of what is. Intimacy with what is means there is no self here. When there is not intimacy with what is, then the self stands separate from what is, from life, and interprets it. It interprets it either as something to be aggrieved about, or something that is taken ownership of as a prize as an accolade, as a trophy. <clears throat> In that, the self is formed. God is not here. Somewhere in one of the Gospels, <clears throat> and I don't care much for facts and figures, so you can look it up, but somewhere it says that Jesus said, the kingdom, is he the kingdom of heaven is here on earth, but you do not have eyes to see it. The kingdom of heaven is here on earth, but you do not have eyes to see it. What does that mean? That doesn't mean that we 
live on earth as a perfect place, a perfect place of perfect harmony and perfect abundance and perfect peace and perfect things for me, perfect experiences for me. Because each individual has a different vision of what perfection is according to the self. The kingdom of heaven on earth points to the possibility of the great love affair. The wide open, unbounded, being with what is. The kingdom of heaven is in you, not outside of you. It is an inner state of beingness. that is awakened, revealed, set alight when you stop creating a grievance out of what is. It's also said somewhere in one of the Gospels, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We can say, Goddess so loved the world that she gave her only begotten daughter. However you'd like to say it, what does that mean? It means that because God is the totality, the totality of beingness, the totality, totality of existence, out of which everything is created, everything exists, every manifestation, every creation, every individuation arises out of the fact of beingness, existence. But that existence is one. It is not many separate existences or many separate beingnesses. And out of that, the world is formed. The world made up of individuations, manifestations. He gave or she gave his only begotten son or daughter in other words, the individuation that you are was born out of this love for creation itself. Your birth was given totally. You are not half born. You are not partially born. You are fully born. You are given to existence. You are given to the manifest as the manifest. This is the love affair. And yet when we are born and we grow up, this full giving of ourselves gets distorted. And we start to resent life. We start to regret life. We start to clutch at the parts we want and reject the parts we don't want. And in that, we have moved away from our godness. We have moved away from our innate divinity. The reconciliation that we seek, the resolution that we seek, 
it's not found in trying to awaken. You will awaken naturally, organically. When you give yourself to life completely, that life is the life that you are experiencing. When you give yourself to life, it's a devotional motion, devotional movement, a devotional attitude. It's a devotion to every moment, however it is. The devotion to every moment means there are no veils standing before you to cloud your eyes. Yeah? Kingdom of heaven is here, but you do not have eyes to see. The eyes that do not see are obscured. Obscured by your attachment, identity with being wounded, with being hard done by, with being unlucky, with being unworthy. All obscurations, all veils must fall away. But that doesn't happen by trying to fix ourselves or fixing our lives. It happens by having the humility and the vulnerability, the openness and the tenderness to simply be intimate with what is, however it is. <laughs>